Welcome to this edition of the Rainer Report. I'm going to be talking about a topic that probably is a bit difficult for most of us to even think about. And that is the topic of what do you do if you really need to ask a volunteer in your church to step down? In other words, he or she really is not just a neutral factor there, they are a negative factor there. They're doing something that may be hurting the ministry of the church, hurting the unity of the church, or just in some way holding the church back. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. It doesn't mean that these are people that uh, you don't want at the church, but they simply are not working out in the position or in the ministry where they currently are. How do you handle that? I know what most of us do. We just totally ignore it. And, you know, most of the time it really is okay to ignore it because sometimes it's better to work around a problem than to try to just go straight over it. So many times that is a good solution. But there will be times pastor or executive pastor or children's minister or student minister, the list could go on and on. There will be times when you need to ask someone to, hey, we really want you to think about doing something differently or stepping down from this ministry. And even though this is difficult, and even though this is a challenge, it's something that all of us need to think about in the context of volunteer ministry. I'm gonna cover six quick points, kind of in rapid fire, and we're going to go through each of these. And feel free to leave your comments to to any interaction that you want to, just uh, share with us any thoughts that you may have. But here are some of the things that we have heard from leaders that really have done it well. And just to keep this in perspective, we hear from you leaders all the time, every day, through Church Answers, through the blog at TomRainer.com, through the podcast, through, through this uh, at uh, uh, Rainer Report, whether you're viewing it on YouTube or where else, uh, wherever else you may be viewing it, we hear from you on a regular basis. And this is one of the areas where we hear from pastors and other leaders, what are they doing if they need to ask a volunteer to step down? First, stating the obvious, make certain that you have prayed sufficiently about it. This decision is not an easy decision. This action is not an easy action. As you will see by the time we get to the end of this, this action is something that has consequences to it. And so before you even begin to think about asking a volunteer to step down, pray about it. Let me just give you an example. Heard from a pastor not too long ago. Identical situation that I'm going through here. Pastor was just really in angst about asking this volunteer to step down. Was going through all kinds of anxiety moments. Mentioned to me on more than one occasion. He said, what should I do? I said, have you prayed about it? Kind of a corny question, but you know what? It was a profound question for him. He said, you know, I pray about a lot of things, but I haven't even prayed about this situation. So I said, give it a couple of weeks. Just give it a couple of weeks of prayer. Maybe you'll get some guidance. If it, it, at the very least, God will give you the strength and the wisdom and the clarity on how to have the conversation. Well, he began to pray about it one week past. And then, I don't remember, day 10, day 11, day 12, before the conversation was going to happen at the end of two weeks. So it's almost the end of two weeks. Guess what happens? He gets a call from the volunteer. And the volunteer, maybe an email, says, I really don't think I'm a good fit for this position. I'm I'm not going to guarantee that every time that you have a difficult situation with a volunteer that this will happen. But pray about it. At the very least, God will guide your conversation. Secondly, stating the obvious, make certain this decision is a necessity. As I indicated, you may be able just to work around it. It might not be the best thing to ask a volunteer to step down if they're really just more of a neutral factor. They may not be productive, efficient, any of those things, but they may not be hurting the ministry or the unity of the church. Is this decision absolutely necessary? We often talk about, do you run the church like a business? No. You may use some stewardship principles like a business, but you don't run it like a business. And there may be someone in a volunteer position that just is not hurting the ministry of the church. So make sure that this decision is an absolute necessity. 
So number one, make certain you've prayed about it. Number two, make certain that this decision is a necessity. Number three, involve others. One of the ways that pastors and other church leaders get in trouble is they try to do things on their own. They don't involve others. They don't seek consensus. And consensus does not mean that you're letting others do all the leading. Consensus means you try to get buy-in. When you bring other people into the decision, even into the action, what you are doing is you're saying, this isn't just all about me as a leader. This is about the good of the church. And by the way, you may get some good indicators of wisdom from the people who will be coming to alongside of you, working with you. Involve others, whatever that may be, involve them so that they can be a part of this. Number four, so if there's some other ministry possibilities. We talk about Jim Collins' book, and I understand it's a secular book, the book Good to Great, but he talks about a double metaphor, and the first metaphor is getting the right people on the bus. That means people that you want on your team, your ministry, your church, wherever your organization may be. And then the other part of it is to get the right people in the right seats on the bus. In other words, there may be another place of ministry for this volunteer. And instead of saying, we want you to step down, you may soften it a bit by saying, would you consider moving from position A over to ministry B? And when you do that, you are, you're still affirming their worth. You're still letting them know that ministry by them is important. So see if there are other ministry possibilities. If you can go into a situation where you have an alternative for the person, even if they do not accept it, you will soften the blow and it will make the conversation go a lot easier. Number five, be clear, truthful, and compassionate. <laughs> you know what we do sometimes? We, we, we sometimes play the game like uh, the, the office worker, office space, whatever that movie was, where the guy was just totally incompetent, not trying to talk about volunteers being totally incompetent, but the guy in the movie was totally incompetent, and no one could get the heart to fire him. They just cut off his payroll. He, he stopped getting checks. And if you know the end of that movie, he ended up blowing up the entire building, so that's another story into itself. But the issue, or the truth behind that, is there was no clarity, there was no truthfulness. It wasn't, I don't remember his name, but Bob is not working out. We need to move on. It was just all over the place conversation. And so when you begin to have this conversation, be clear, be truthful. It's, it's not a matter of being, being firm or harsh. It's just a matter of being clear and truthful. But at the same time, be compassionate. This is about ministry. This is not about a secular business. And of course, secular businesses should be compassionate as well. But you understand my point. Be clear, be truthful, and be compassionate. Finally, number six, think through likely and unintended consequences. The likely consequences are if I do this, what's going to happen? Well, he or she may have an emotional reaction. Okay, if he or she has an emotional reaction, who will that impact? If that impacts them, how will it impact the church? And as you start going down those different types of branch logic, you will begin to hit some of the potential unintended consequences. Oh my goodness, I haven't thought about this as a possibility. Oh no, I have not considered that if this happens, then this will happen. Don't make a decision just in a vacuum. Make the decision and do the action understanding fully what the consequences may be. Some of them you will know right away. Do your best to understand the unintended consequences. By the very definition, you may not know what they are, but do your best to understand them. Yes, sometimes we need to ask a volunteer to step down. Yes, it is painful. Yes, it is difficult, but keep these six things in mind, prayer, the absolute necessity, the involvement of others, seeing if there are other ministry possibilities for the volunteer, being clear, truthful, and compassionate, and then thinking through the likely and unintended consequences. It's never easy, but if you follow this path, God may honor it, and it may be done in a way that brings his, himself glory. Thank you for being here for the Rainer Report. As always, 
I am so appreciative of Costco and Associates, the design bill firm that is helping churches all over the place. We're so grateful for Tim Songster and Costco, and we're also grateful that they are our sponsor for this. You can reach them at churchdesign.com. Once again, that's churchdesign.com. Thank you for joining us each and every week as we are here at the Rainer Report. Stay tuned as we continue in this brief, rapid-fire way to address issues that are impacting your church as we work together for the great, a good of the church.